to encourage you to join our women's ministry, New Hope Lihui Women's Ministry. That's right. Every Thursday nights, we get together and we dive deep into the Word. That's right. We dive deep into the Word. And then we do worship, prayer. We get into breakout rooms and you get to partner with two other women that will love you, will pray for you, and encourage you. So ladies, join us Thursday nights. That's right. Love you, ladies. Have a great week. Hey, everybody. My name's Brian. I serve on the media team at New Hope Lihui. And I just wanted to say what a blessing it is to serve um, in any capacity here. And I'd like to invite anybody who has any interest in serving uh, to just come on down and, and just come in the back and talk to us. And I just want to thank my family for allowing me to serve. Uh, to take time away from my, from them, uh, just be here. <laughs> and as a family, we love watching him, and we feel like we're serving just as much. So if any of you are interested in serving here at New Hope, uh, just come and see the register, and let them know what you're interested in, and get on board. We'd love to have you. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to New Hope Lahui. We're hoping that you enjoy today's service. We're looking forward to a word from God. Let me say, I am so thankful. I'm Renee Simpson. I've been here for about a year and a half, and I'm so thankful for finding New Hope Lahui. Pastor John and Pastor Rhonda have just been such a blessing to me, and I hope the word blesses you today also. Aloha, and I love you. Hey, welcome to New Hope Lihui. Whether you're watching online or in person, welcome. And are they ready? Hope so. I hope they so are. Let's get ready to worship. All right, guys. You guys want to count down with me? Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. One, let's give God a great big hand clap this morning. All right, welcome everybody here in person and everyone watching at home or in your car, or your laptop, your tablet, your phone, wherever you're doing right now, we welcome you to worship with us this morning here at New Hope Lahui. It is so good to see each and every one of you guys here. I hope, I hope and trust everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving. If you did, give God a great big hand clap, Amen. All right. It's such a good time to know that we have family and friends around us. And more importantly, we've got the Lord. We've got the Lord with us everywhere we go. So I'm going to read a scripture and then we're going to worship his holy and great name. Psalm 35 verse 18 says this. I will give you thanks. Somebody say thanks. Oh, man. 
It says, I will give you thanks in the great assembly. I will praise you among many people. The psalmist here is declaring what he's going to do because he's a thankful person. He's thankful and he knows who's the one that he deserves the most thanks in his life, and that's his God. Let's go ahead and stand up this morning. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to get into it. Father, we're grateful that you're on the throne this morning. We're grateful that you're an awesome and a mighty and a kind and a powerful God, a God that forgives us, that pours grace and mercy upon us more than we could ever fathom, imagine, or deserve. You're just that good to us. And we're going to acknowledge that goodness, Father, as we worship you in every personal way it is with us. Some of us will do it demonstratively, loudly. Some of us will do it quietly. Some of us will do it pondering the things that you've done for us. Some of us will do it in fear and worry and anxiety because of what we're going through. But they're going to push through in worship, I declare, by your spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Move and reign in the hearts and minds of your people as we honor you this morning. We love you. And it's Jesus' mighty and holy name we pray. Amen and amen. To Devon. Wow. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to New Hope Lihue, where we are going to start the morning by clapping. Yeah? Can do that? We're going to do something like this. Like this. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's it. We're going to wait till all 200 of you guys are clapping. <laughs> Don't turn around. Don't turn around. Just straight ahead. <laughs> I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? Don't stop. Don't stop. Come on. It was mine too. Till I.
You know, it, it it really is true. Yeah, God's love he's he's faithful forever and ever. And I mean, what is there to complain about? <laughs> he's so good, even through our worst times in our life. And you know, Pastor John said this a while back. We got to be thankful for the process too, before we get to the blessing, right? So I'm thankful every time. We all need to be thankful for that. And we're, we're in that Amen. thankful season. We need to be in a thankful season every time. And now we're getting into the Christmas season, right? You guys ready for Christmas? Oh, <laughs> some of you. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, we're going to start it off with this. So.
to a world with more questions than answers, where dissonant voices ignite division. My heart will stand firm in this decision. I choose faith. Though I walk through a landscape that is uncharted and foreign, where the once familiar seems lost and forgotten, I will remember that nothing is unexpected to my Father in heaven, and I choose thankful. Though I live each day uncertain of tomorrow, I will accept that tomorrow was never certain and cherish every chance to witness the wonder of creation. I choose thankful. I choose faith in what is unseen, hope for a future beyond the adversity, love spoken despite animosity. I choose to believe. The struggles I face may be painful, though it sometimes seems impossible. Though I fall a thousand times covered in the dust of failure, I am able to rise. Not because I am strong, not because life is perfect, but because in all circumstances, Jesus lives. When this world stands perplexed, and demands I give a reason for the hope that I have, I can only say that in Jesus' name, I choose thankful. It's not a simple choice. It's not an easy choice. But it is the only choice that brings calm in the storm. Not by my power, but through the strength of Christ alone. I choose thankful. Amen. Wasn't that good? Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. Wasn't that some awesome worship? Amen. Then you feel God's presence in his spirit. And then the presence in the spirit arrives the moment you walk in because it resides in us. Amen. I'm going to go through some announcements this morning. And uh, I'm just really excited to be here with you guys. How about you? Amen. Amen. I'm excited that our men's group is going to continue to meet. We, got, we had took a couple weeks off. We took a couple weeks off, but now we are going to have a new location and a new time. So, men, we're going to be here at 6 p.m. tomorrow, and we're going to have some wonderful fellowship. We have a great message. We have some great food. So just come on by 6 o'clock. Men, 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 we need you up in this joint, amen, because we want you to be encouraged. We want you to, to hear what God has put in your life to be a blessing to everyone else around you, okay? So that's tomorrow night here at 6 p.m. On Wednesday, the ladies have also, they just, didn't they bless, who saw service last week, amen? You guys saw service or here last week? You got to see the hula ministry do their thing, amen? It was beautiful to watch and to see. And they're going to continue to do that. And ladies, you are welcome to join them. Wednesdays at 6.15, that will be here. Wednesdays at 6.15, the ladies are going to be uh, hula ministry. Pastor Ron is excited. You ladies need to be excited up in this joint. Now, I'm from Cali. I can't do none of them hula moves, all right? So that's not going to be happening. But you may think, oh, I don't think I can do it either. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. So ladies, join them at 6.15 on Wednesday. Amen. Ladies, also, you're going to be resuming your, uh, they took a one-week break for Thanksgiving. Going to have your Zoom uh, fellowship, and they continue to go through the series by Jeannie Allen to get out of your head. It's about anxiety. It's about worries and fears. It's a really, really good study. Uh, we're doing it in our small group. So we want to encourage you guys to join them online via Zoom this Thursday at 7 p.m. If you have questions on how to get on, how to do the band app and all those different things that they utilize to communicate with one another, you can see Sister Amy in the back. Now, you want to thank each and every one of you guys who register, and I, I just want to do a little explanation about why we do this. Uh, if you don't know, what we do is we have you, you go online, you register, and the reason we do this is, is several, several reasons. For one, we want to make sure we're being good neighbors to one another. And in this time of the pandemic, we want to make sure we keep in safe, socially distanced. We want to make sure we uh, have the accurate account of, of everyone that comes in here. And we do this for you. We do this for one another to keep each other safe. In these challenging times where there's a, a, a lot of confusion sometimes, we just got to go back to the word. And the word says to love your neighbor as yourself. And the best way to love your neighbor is to do something to keep them safe by wearing your mask, by washing your hands. And doing all these things that are recommended by people, by quite frankly, 
who people who went to school a lot longer than your homie who failed high school science but is online telling you why you shouldn't do some of the things that the scientists recommend? I'll leave that alone. But so we're doing this because we care about you. That's that's all. And so we thank you. Give yourself a hand, man, for doing that, for being compliant, for doing what uh, we're doing. We're just doing the best that we can know how to do. And we ask you continue to do the same. We uh, normally we have youth every uh, sat on Sunday and we go. But this morning we got a special guest in the building who will be introduced very shortly. So youth, you're going to stay in here today. We want you to hear the message and hear uh, how God. I ain't, I'm just going to shut up and let God do the rest through that young man and what's going to happen later. Amen. I'm excited to hear what's going to be happening. Amen. With that, let's go ahead and pray for our tithe and offering this morning. We're going to continue to pray that God bless this ministry, bless this island. The reason we're able to pour into the community is because you, God has poured something into you, and you in turn pour it out in tithes and offerings. Father, thank you this morning for every giver that is in this place, for every person that is here, no matter their financial situation, no matter what's going on with them, God, you are concerned about them. You're concerned about their food, their housing, their clothing, their health. Father, your word tells us that you are concerned about your people. And that concern, Lord God, it goes into blessings. And those blessings go to overpouring. And those blessings go to sacrifice sometimes. And, Father, as we give, we pray, Lord God, that you would continue to pour in us so we could pour into others. Bless this time. Bless this offering. May we be cheerful givers in this house. It's your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Welcome, New Hope Lahui. How are we doing today? <laughs> we can do better than that. Come on, let, let, let's clap our hands louder than that. Uh, let's let them know on, online that we have a, a, a full house that are properly socially distanced here in the house of God today. Amen. God is so good. God is so good. Listen, we're going to be changing things up again here today. And um, we've got to be a church that's ready to pivot and ready for change. So I got my beautiful... I was going to say, I'm going to say it, scrumptious wife. Should I say that? I'm sorry. <laughs> I, got, I got knees, and God filled those knees. Amen. <laughs> I got no problem saying it. Anyway, so hey I got online, my beautiful hi wife. Online. Hi, online. <laughs> uh, today, we have an opportunity to, um, to do an interview with a very dear friend of mine, and we want to start this interview off. As you know, we've been doing a series called To Live for Service. And we live our lives to serve each other, to serve our community. And today we're going to learn through this young man um, what it is um, to be missional and what we do and all that we do by, by hearing his testimony. Um, he is a, a, a missionary to the world. Um, um, his missionary work started here on Kauai, local boy. Uh, we had him in, 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 in cheapest. He was a middle school student, and um, he was a great student. <laughs> Only his family is, is laughing right now, right? And um, at the, the high school uh, youth worker has been to Mexico and is now serving on, on a long-term mission trip in Africa. Where he is serving in Malawi, and he's doing an amazing, an amazing job. And we get the opportunity to interview him here today so you may hear his testimony and hear what he is doing. And it will be an encouragement to each and every single one of you all because we live for serving amen amen so Mission Rhonda, do, do you want to introduce him yeah go, you, you go i'm gonna ahead. start crying it's, it's, it's okay I, I gave you permission to cry today you can cry um i've known shaden 
I don't know, for a long time. And actually, I've known Shaden through Moms and Claire. I'm going to cry. But, okay, never mind. Let me introduce to you Shaden <laughs> Ringo. We, <laughs> we can do better than that, church. We can do better than that. <laughs> love you, love you. Shaden, have a seat, thank have you, a thank seat. You. We are excited to have you in the house here today, and this is a bit different. I've always wanted to be on Good Morning America. Uh, good afternoon, Kauai. Um, but we have an opportunity to, 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 we have to be socially distanced, but to, to, to just talk to what you are doing and your heart, and we have known you for quite a long time now. And I've said this last week when you were in the house, that um, even though you are younger than me, you have actually been a, a, a contemporary mentor of mine. I have got the opportunity to watch you grow, to watch you move around the world in the work you did in Mexico, uh, what you're doing now in Africa, and just and you hear your story has really been, for me, it's been inspirational. So I want to thank you, first of all, for who you are and for what God is doing in your Great. life. Yeah. So you are presently a missionary in Malawi, yes. right? And, and, but before we show that, we want to get to what got you there, is yeah. what we want, what, what we want to do. No, no, I'm going to give it to you now. So, Rhonda, you can begin to ask the question because we have questions here. <laughs> Hello. Gonna, I'm, I'm going to tell you, this, this isn't easy, this morning stuff. <laughs> I don't know how they do that. All right. Hello. But anyway, Rhonda, go right that ahead. That was my question. Okay, Shaden. Okay, hang you on. You got to open the book up first, Rhonda. I know, hang on. It's upside down. <laughs> All right. There goes the Emmy. All right, Shaden. Oh, it's so funny. I can't believe I'm interviewing Shaden. It's this is like wild. This is a wild ride. God is so good. Yeah? So good. All right, Shaden. This is a this is going to be a funny sort of question. What were you doing before God called you or like I would say knock you on the head? <laughs> Lord have mercy. What I was doing, I was so busy being cool in the eyes of the world. <laughs> and I, was, I was cool being a loser. That's what I was doing. Um, <laughs> I wasn't living for God, but I thought I was living the life. And I was living the dream as a teenager. I was a photographer working for the Guardian newspaper. And on the side, I was taking photos for... <laughs> Fine photos, Shaden. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Um... I was a fashion photographer for San Lorenzo Bikini. <laughs> no, 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 don't Bikinis. go. <laughs> That's not a, something to be proud of. <laughs> um, and as a teenager, that's like the dream, right? You get paid to photograph hot women in bikinis. <laughs> I was living the dream. Um, it's funny that when John introduced me, he said, we all kind of knew Shaden in middle school. <laughs> and that's kind of... <laughs> You know, when, when, at the, when, when Pastor Rana says she's known me since Mother's in Prayer, there's a miracle that has happened because only a miracle can take a teenage boy away from taking photos of women in bikinis and getting paid to do the will and the work of God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so I guess how I got a shift in my brain to, to live and work for God is I went on a mission trip to Mexico. And of course, when you're a teenager doing those things, you don't go to Mexico for, well, for me personally, I didn't go to do any serving. <laughs> I was going because I wanted to be in another country to see Mexico and, you know, hola, como estas, you know, and, and practice my, my Spanish. And I went there and everything changed. Everything. I brought my camera. I was going to take some mean photos of the slums and, you know, come back with all this photojournalistic photos I can put on my profile. And I didn't even touch my camera the whole time I was there. Wow. And God's like, no, nah, this is, the, you're done. You're done with this. Like, you're done. It was a wake-up call because God's going, I gave you this life for so much more. And the joy that you'll receive living for me is better, greater than what." you get out of taking photos of women in bikinis, right? A teenage dream. <laughs> Come on now. And God's going, this is it. 
this is your life. This is what your life is going to be is working for me. And I've been doing that ever since. And I love it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So good. Now, you, you were telling me a, a, that you went, you found the Lord and, and you were on fire and you were doing youth here. Then you went to Biola. Right. And then something happened there. Okay. So, so tell that story. I was, trying to, I was going to try to leave the school out of it. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. We'll, we'll say Azusa Pacific. Was it Azusa you know, Biola? We'll say Azusa because that's my rivalry. Oh, school. I'm so, sorry. It was, no, no, that's okay. right. <laughs> I'm still so okay, bad, no, no, that's all right. Um, beautiful school. And by the way, kids, this is not for you to go home and tell your mom and dad, hey, that guy never goes to school. I'm not going to go to school now. That's not, that's not what I'm going to say. I, I went to school. I got a degree. And I'm actually getting another degree online. So Praise continue school. This is not anything to do. You know. Yeah, there we go. So I was at school. After the mission trip to Mexico, I thought what I had to do was to go to school at a Christian university to become a missionary. And the school that I was pursuing would have cost me 120000 for a degree. And I was doing the math. And I was going, how am I going to be a missionary after this? Right? The whole time I was in school, I was going back and forth to Mexico once a month or, you know, on holidays. I was so desperate just to be working for the Lord in Mexico, that I actually paid someone $200 to drop me off at the border. <laughs> like, I was desperate, right, to be on the field. Not to say there was no field in Los Angeles, but my call was for Mexico. And after about a year of doing that, God's going, I'm, I'm praying, and I'm going, God, do I really need this degree? And God's going, you don't, you don't need a degree to, to tell people that I love them. Mm. Right? Like, yeah, you messed up in junior high and high school. Yeah, so what? You're with me now. I will be with you. And so I made a decision like, no, I don't need a $120,000 degree to go to the slums of Mexico. <laughs> and it's funny because when you leave a university, you have to get signatures of your professors. <laughs> And this was really hard for me to do because I loved the school. It was a great school. Kids, if you are thinking of going to school, check out Biola University. Seriously. Paid advertisement. They paid me to say that. No, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> but through, through the week of getting the signatures from my professors, every single one of them said, this is not a good idea. You're always going to be known as a college dropout. You know? And, and I'm going, wait, wait, wait these are people with doctorates in systematic theology, right? They've gone to school in, like, England, right? They've gone to Fuller, these high-end schools with PhDs, double PhDs, working for... Uh, this is the best college for, for a Christian university. And they're telling me this is not a good idea. In fact, one professor had me outside the, for, I think, two and a half hours, as when he was supposed to be teaching the, the class, he was outside and giving me every reason not to go. <laughs> Could you imagine the fear that I had? It, God, uh, uh, what? Uh, uh, what am I going to do? I want to follow you. I want to go out there and I want to be the light of Jesus in dark places where no one wants to go. And that week, the last day of that week, there was a, it's funny, there was a mission conference. <laughs> right? And, um, there's this guy named Francis Chan, who you might know of. I, I, I knew of him when I was a kid here because um, John Irving was my youth pastor, and he would fly him over, and he would lead camps and do things here. So I thought he was a local pastor, right? He was, you know, this Chinese guy. I thought he was from Oahu or something. So I got to know him. We talked story, you know. He would come. Yeah, so I saw him walking on campus, and I go, hey, Francis. You know. <laughs> hey, Francis, you remember me? This was before he was like, you know, famous with uh, love, win or love, not love wins, not love, uh, crazy, crazy love, love yeah. you know, um, <laughs> Francis, you know me? And he's like, um, <laughs> no, <laughs> sorry. I'm like, you did camps on Kauai. And he's like, oh yeah, you know? And so he kind of shifted the um, conversation because it was so awkward. I'm like, how do you not know me? Like we cruise and talk story. And then, um. Yeah, it's wild, Francis Chan. Uh, anyway, he, 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 he starts to shift the conversation, and he goes, so how are you liking school here? You're a sophomore, junior? And I go, oh, um, yeah, the school's great, but yeah, I don't, I don't go here anymore. And he's like, oh, okay. 
you know, I'm trying to beat around the bush. And he's like, so you go to Vanguard University or you go somewhere else and you're commuting for the conference? I'm like, oh, no. And he's like, well, what's going on? Why are you here? And I'm like, well, actually, this is my last day. Um, my car is packed and I'm moving to Mexico. <laughs> and I go, ram, 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 here we go. He's going to give me another spiel. I'm going to hear it from another guy that has, you know, an education to tell me why I shouldn't do what I'm doing. And he goes, that is so cool. That is so cool. After a week of hearing, no, no, no. After a week of hearing, no, you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do this. He goes, this is so cool. Like he was taken back. And I decided to stay for the conference. <laughs> and it was so, so awesome because at the conference, he spoke about his new book or his book, Crazy Love. And in it, he, he was giving examples of people he've met, he's at, he has met over the years with crazy love to, do, to, to serve and to love God and to, to go. And then he said, you got to have crazy love like this one guy that I just met. He, he just dropped out of school and he's moving to, to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> it was a winning moment because in the front row, guess who was sitting there? All the professors. <laughs> I don't want to sound like pride. pride. Uh, maybe I do. But there's a thing. When God calls you to go and do something, sometimes the people you might want to hear the approval from, you might not get it from them. Because when you're called to serve, ultimately... You're really not doing it for them anyway, right. right? So when you hear the confirmation, it might be something as amazing as that, where God, where you go, oh, actually, it, it, it is probably from God, because only God could have done that. So yeah, that was a cool thing. And I remember going, driving to Mexico, got in my car, and all my friends, too, that, that were disagreeing with me, ended up praying for me at the end. Um, it was so cool. And as I'm driving on the I-5 down south, um, I had this moment in my car that I broke down because my fear was you're always going to be known as a college dropout. How are you going to provide for your family? You know, all these questions that my professors were saying. And as I'm driving, I had to stop and pull over because the Lord just filled the car with this intense joy that I couldn't drive. I was just full of tears and I pulled over and God's going, you serve me with your whole life. You continue to pursue me. This is your paycheck. This Amen. is it. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. So, Shaden, you spent four years then in the mission field yes. in Mexico, correct? Yes, four years, yeah. Wow. And you can relate to that too, Rhonda. I remember. Going to India actually, to yeah, I went to India, but I remember, Sheila, praying for Shaden while we were in Mexico. While you, well, I felt like I was in Mexico every time we met for Moms in Prayer because there's lots of good things, but also warfare and we prayed for you a lot a thank lot you. yeah, yeah. you are welcome but no thank you it's an honor to pray for you and for all the children in mexico so shaden you spent four years in mexico right and then you came back here and then you were doing ministry here at youth ministry which by the way i gotta say that that really your leadership blew that ministry up over of at, at um Kauai christian fellowship it was amazing what was happening over there but then you felt this call to to Africa yes and uh, and you were sharing me that story and that's where you are right now and something else you told me that was really wisdom for my heart in that you've been in Malawi for four years now and I asked you how long do you plan on being there and you said I'm gonna be there for at least 10 years because you said now in my fourth year I'm finally getting my footing I'm finally feeling it and I'm gonna say this for myself in the church I feel the same thing now with our church of the four years as a senior and I, I really feel as if we're moving it and, and you said that you had a, a, it was a long-term commitment. And, and I appreciate you saying that to me because it made me feel a whole lot better about me. Uh, well, not me, but what, what God is doing here at New Hope Lihui. But I want to get to what got you to Malawi. And, and you were sharing the story about the, about the hut and what was happening. And can you share that really quick? And then we want to go and show people exactly what you're doing over there momentarily. All right, yeah. So um, I, Mexico and working here in Kauai, I knew God was preparing me for something long-term. And I knew it was going to be somewhere off the grid, like out in the bush, somewhere where nobody wants to go. That, was, that has been my prayer. God sent me where no one wants to go. And I want to caution you to, to be very careful <laughs> because God will send you there. And if you don't listen, oh boy. So, 
Whew, it's a good story. Um, I, I, I got my bags together and I bought a one-way ticket to Kenya. And I said, God, I don't know what I'm doing, but I trust you. And I'm going to go and I'm going to figure it out. <laughs> so I got, in my, I got my, you know, two bags of luggage and I flew to Kenya. And I had an idea that it was Kenya. I've been praying for, you know, a few years. Um, and I thought it was Kenya. Somewhere in Kenya. And about a month went by. And something just wasn't right in my spirit. And I was kind of in- introduced to a bunch of different ministries. And I'm going, God, what's going on here? I like this ministry, but I just don't feel like I'm, I'm called here. What, and I, I just, you know, find another one, I find another one, talking to some people. And I've been getting that angst, that anxiety, like, oh, no. <laughs> like, I quit my dream job at KCF, which is to surf with kids, right? <laughs> and, you know, I was a junior high youth pastor, but I left, and I don't know what I'm doing. And he, and he gave me this dream um, one week before I was flying to Malawi, I was going to Malawi just to visit my friend, um, the Metzgers, if you guys know of them. Yeah, they're, they're missionaries there. Um, Auntie Cindy was very, and Uncle Leroy, they were very telling me, no, you got to just come and visit. And I'm going, mm, no, I think God's really calling me to Kenya. Like, you know, I'll, but I'll come visit you. I, I had to say yes, because she actually gave me some money to go visit. So I couldn't say no. The week before my flight, I got this dream, and in this dream, and the whole, the whole time I'm there, I'm praying for God to show me a sign. Yeah? I get this dream, and it's this hut, and it's like this crazy, like there's fire all over. There's like these drums of fire. There's these angels all over the place. It's like this insane time of worship, and I was in the hut. This is going to be really weird, but I was in the hut, but I was also outside listening in. And, and I felt like the Lord was inside the hut talking to me. And he's going, I'm calling you here. I'm calling you to this house. I'm calling you here, right? And I'm listening in. I'm, go- I'm outside listening in going, okay, wh- where, where is here, you know? I wake up. I wake up in Kenya. And I, and I, and I immediately I knew it wasn't Kenya. God's going, I'm calling you here. And I know it's not Kenya. And I go, oh, gosh. I'm in trouble because I have no money. <laughs> now what? Um, I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm all yours. We'll figure it out. I, I fly to Malawi at night. Um, and it's like a three hour drive in the bush, two and a half hour drive in the bush. Um, the next morning, you know, I get up, I, I read my Bible, do my thing with the Lord. And he says, look up as I'm reading. He says, look up. I look up and I'm in the hut of my dream. And from that moment, I knew this is it. God said, I'm calling you here. And um, that's what happens when you trust that's the amazing. Lord. And you just go. He <laughs> will blow your mind. Amen. In the hut of your dream. Amen. Praise the Lord. So now you're in Malawi. You've been there for the last four years. And we want to look at what you're doing there. We want to share with everybody what's happening there. And uh, we have some pictures we're going to be showing also. Um, but you are discipling one-on-one. Um, with, 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 with the lo- local youth population there. Yeah. Uh, can you explain how that okay. is working and what it's doing? And we'll have slides up here right. for people to see. <clears throat> yeah, I can't look up there. I'll start crying. But um, so I work in the bush um, two and a half hours from civilization, which means our neighbors are in mud huts. They have to have water drawn from wells, no electricity. Um, there's some electricity, but not much. Um, and on our base... We have children that are considered to be orphans, but when they come onto base, they're no longer orphans. We don't say that word ever because they're adopted into families. Mm. So when I'm on the base working with these children, I work with the teenagers. And my thing, my heart is discipleship, big time. And I feel like the greatest thing you can ever do for a youth, a teenager, is give them a platform for their voice to be heard for God to use them. Um, We can teach them about the Bible all you want, right? They can know all the answers, but it's until you show them that they have value in what they do, they come alive. So for the last four years, you can see up here, these are some of the youth that I've been, that I've been leading, the ones that are standing up. Um, Those are some of the boys too. I can't look up there. I get, I get emotional, but, um, 
<clears throat> it's, it's an amazing thing that I get to do because I live with them. I work with them, do Bible studies and lead them. And then we go out into the bush, which is like this photo here. That's my old truck. And we do children's ministry. And I tell the youth that I'm working with, I tell them this. I am just the driver. I'm not doing any of the ministry you are. I just drive. I drive. I provide the, the balls, the, the crayons, the whatever materials you need. You come up with the songs. You come up with the talk. You come up with whatever. Right? And um, we've been doing that for the last four years. Three, four times a week we go out into the bush. And they, they lead. And um, it's just amazing. It's just amazing to see teenagers come alive in what they do. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the photos that, that are streaming. Um, apart from that, that's where my heart is there. Um, but apart from that, I do um, prison ministry. Um, I teach at a Bible college down there. Um, I, there's a lot of tutoring going on in the schools. Uh, yeah. I don't want to cry either right now. Um, um, what's the, like, do they have running water or like, how do they get, th- I remember going to the slums in India and they didn't have, um, I believe that God for such a time as this, I used to always say, why we got to go to another ter- third world country when we, um, have problems in our own backyard and who? God like stopped me and said, let me fix you up, Rhonda. <laughs> right. And so he, he took me to India, but how is, what's, uh, what's like the living, I mean, you're like going, I can't imagine going in the bush. So like, just tell us a little bit, not too much, but a little yeah. bit. Like. Um, so the reason why I decided to go out into the bush is because the churches down there, they don't have much of a focus for children's ministry. Um, church is kind of a thing for old people, <laughs> you know. It's, um, there's not really, really much things for children. And um, which is, I think, you know, a child growing up, for I think that's the most important time to be sharing the word of God. You know, making, making the word excited, making, making them excited to live for a higher purpose, Right? Especially when, they're, when you're surrounded by poverty. I don't know if you can... I haven't put much photos up there because I don't, I don't like exposing um, poverty so much. But um, because sometimes we look at the photos and we look at the poverty and we don't really see the child. We see the, right. the rags. Um, so I don't really like posting those photos anymore. But they're... It's extreme poverty. Malawi is one of the... I even hate saying this, but it's one of the poorest countries in Africa, one of the poorest in the world. Um, kids don't get to go to school um, because school education is just not a thing uh, in most areas. It's farming. Um, so a lot of kids, a lot of adults don't know how to read or do math. Um, so it's really sad. Um, they're, they're, they're really poor. Um, they, may, they maybe eat one meal a day, and sometimes that consists of runny water with corn in it. Um, so it's a very poverty-stricken area that we go into. Um, yeah. Now, one of your, your, your students or one of the you mentored, his name is Marco, Marco correct? Yeah. And, uh, and Marco is not a big, he's going to be going to high school. Can you tell us a bit about Marco and what, okay. what he, what you've, how long you've yeah. been Marco? So um, Marco, or we, I call him Marigo. Um, that's how you pronounce it down there. Um, so he's been, he's been with, he's the boy in the middle in the orange shirt. Um, Robert is on the left and the, behind me is Duncan. And the one that's hugging me in the back, his name is Francis. Um, all those three boys on the left, they're going to school or actually no, Robert has one more year. But, um, how the school works is we have primary school, uh, elementary school on the base. And when it comes to high school, secondary school, we send them out to boarding school. Um, and for that to happen, we need some sponsors. Um, so Marigo in the middle, he has been with me from the moment I moved there, so four years ago. And he's just been, you know, following me, wanting to do whatever I'm doing. He's been, he's been out with every single outreach that we've done in the bush. He's been there, excited to do it. Yeah. 
He has an incredible heart for worship. We do Sunday night worships, and he's there with his hands up and raised, you know, and his, uh, he's just an incredible. I look at him and I go, wow, you give me inspiration to be hungry for the Lord. Like he is, I don't know, it's, it's, it's just, it's insane to see young teenagers on fire for the Lord. Um, so that one, that one carries something really, really strong. Um, he is going to be a leader, a powerhouse for the Lord. He's, he already is. Um, yeah, so. So we want to partner with you. Yeah. And we want to, um, our church is going to sponsor Marco um, for the next four years for his schooling. Um, and that's what we're going to be doing. And, um. Um, we're called, um, with Foursquare, we're called to help globally. And um, if, you know, we, uh, God is favor on our church. Yeah. And even in the middle of a pandemic, we feel, Pastor was just talking to me and kind of like in his little saying, he was like, Rhonda, can you start praying about what we can do to globally help um, missions or someone? And then you showed up. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing how the Holy Spirit answered um, our heart. And as we prayed about it, um, yeah, we just, and um, if we can get that screen again, Lele, the child that we will be, the one in the middle, Marco, he's going to be our child, that our new Hope Lihui child that we will be sponsoring. And um, just give God a praise and thank you, Lord, for that. And yes, so, it's, it's going to require. Well, we're able to sponsor yeah. him out of, from the church. Um, and I believe it's 2500 a year for schooling. And that, that, that's boarding everything. So we're committed for the next four years um, to make sure that Marco was able to graduate. And, um, and we're excited that you'll still be sponsoring him and being there with him. But also at the end of, of, of service today, I'm going to give everybody an opportunity to also support specifically Shaden Ringor and missions that are happening in Malawi. And we'll show you how to go to the website or the text to give in which you can um, go uh, and, and, and help Shaden in the work that he is doing. Let me tell you something. I take, um, I take platforms seriously. I don't just invite anybody to come to church and to speak and to share. Um, and I can tell you that... Um, this is fertile soil. Um, we can see the work that Shayan is doing. Um, you can see the, the emotion in him, and you can see how God is speaking to him and what is happening in his life. And we want to be a church that is not just thinking here locally, but is thinking globally. And Shayan, you've been a great example um, for Kauai and for the people here, for myself, of, of what that looks like and following and pursuing after God. Amen? Amen. Um, do you have another question for Shayan, Rhonda? Question. Um, Shayan. In about two minutes, how has support of family helped you? Um, I can't do this without it. And this is not just the money. This is the prayer. Um, There are moments, my mom knows, I keep her up at night. Some some days I I keep her on anxiety for weeks (laughs) with what's going on. Um, I mean, there's been, especially in Mexico where my life has been on the line a couple times, (laughs) Um, prayer is huge. Moms in prayer is huge. Whenever I go through something, I know the first thing I do is I, well, I pray. The the second thing I do is I, I text my mom and I go, mom, send out help. And, and, and she does it. Um, so support is huge because we're, that's what we're called to do, right? As a body of believers, we're called to support. And I'm not even talking about financial here. I'm talking about prayer. Because without that, I'd be done. Without, I, I can feel when the prayer is on me, and I can feel it when I'm like, I need prayer. Because it's, <laughs> it's intense. Um, the spiritual warfare is intense. The, um, the situations that you're in sometimes is just a nightmare. Um, but God is faithful. God has always been faithful. Amen. He has been faithful, Shade, and I remember getting some of the prayer requests and praying for you. Can we all make a commitment right now to Shaden and what is happening? To write down if you have your journal or something, write down Shaden's name, write down Malawi, and just keep him in your prayers daily. 
Um, if it comes to mind, just pray for him. I also want to honor mom and dad. Can you all two stand up really quick? Can we just honor yeah. them? Yeah. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, you know, we're, we're going to be ending here soon. The, the interview is one more question. One, one more question. question. One more question. Um, Shaden, what is one of the most funniest oh, yes. moments? in Malawi that you can remember and yeah so the there's a lot of funniest funny moments but it's not like a joke it's more out of like so much frustration of how like things kind of operate there that you're just like this has to be a joke like you know it's just it's just this is a joke uh so there's some uh when I first moved there I had to do a background check to get my visa and I had to go back and forth to this, this building. I think I went back and forth like four or five times. I think about two and a half hours, you know, I got to drive there and I get there. And they're like, oh, so we lost the key for the, for the file. We got to come back tomorrow. Like, Are you kidding me? <laughs> so I go back, you know, and it's like, oh, the, the guy's not here. Come back tomorrow. So it's just like, are you kidding me? You know, moments. The most like climactic moment was when I finally got an interview with the guy. Hope he doesn't watch this. Because <laughs> he's the one that's in charge of my visa, right? Every every two years, I get I finally get the meeting with him, and he's like, "Um, we need your background check, your police background check," and he's like giving me a lecture. He's like, "We can't just have people move in here with no background check, you know? We don't know who you are." I'm like, "You have my background check; it's there." And he's like, "No, we don't. It says no record." <laughs> <laughs> I hope he's not watching this. <laughs> So um, I'm going, yeah, that's, that's my background check. I have no record. And he's like, we need your record. <laughs> right? And I'm, I'm going, how do I say this without offending him? You know, and, and he's just going back and forth. Back, we're going back and forth. I'm like, no record means I've never been arrested. He's like, okay, well, I need that on file. So I'm like, you know what? I can't argue. This is just something, the, the, the language barrier here is just not happening. So I had to come back home and go through a whole FBI check and, you know, but that's just something, there's so many of those little things that can drive you insane <laughs> and you just got to laugh and be like, whatever, like God's got it. That's so good. <laughs> and guess what? There's no record of your wrongs, right guys Amen. out there? Amen. So Praise good. The Thank you, Shaden. Shaden. So, so finish up. We want, um, Shaden, if there was something that you could tell the church here today um, that you can tell us to encourage us, what, what, what would that be? Yeah. Um, my, my, encouragement, my encouragement is you don't have to travel overseas to be missionary. Um, what, what I see you guys doing, what I see Pastor John, Pastor Rhonda, you guys are doing it right now, right here. What I'm doing is easy. Getting on a plane is easy. What's hard is loving your neighbor. What's hard is getting to know the name of the person that lives right across the street. <laughs> Whoa. So I, don't wanna, I wanna encourage you guys. You guys are doing it. You're looking at me going, wow, he's doing it. No, no, no. What you guys are doing on a weekly basis, daily basis, you're doing it. Keep going, keep going. When, when you're down and you have no energy, keep moving, keep going because you're doing it. This is what we're called to do. Amen. 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 Let's give Shade and Ringo a big round of applause here at North Bluey. Thank you so much. Love you, bro. Love you, love you, love you, love you, love you. Um, we are blessed to have Shaden here, and what a blessing it's been. Has it blessed you today? Has it blessed you? I'm sure it has. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, give my beautiful wife a hand. Pastor Mark, thank you so much. So I'm, I'm going to close us out here today and share with us something to really bring it all together, what we've learned here today from Shaden and, and his heart and what he is doing on missions right now in Malawi. And um, I want to bring this all together for us because Shaden said something um, near the end of what he said, encouraging us that we're doing it now to keep doing what we're doing here on Kauai. And I want to share with you today a Latin term. And the Latin term is called, now repeat after me, it's called messio, say messio day. Say it again. Say Messio day. Let's put the screen up there. What does Messio day mean? Be Messio day means the mission of God or the sending of God is a Latin theological term. And what it means that he is a God who is sent. 
He is a God who is on mission. And we serve a God who has been sent. We serve a God who is on mission. In other words, Jesus left heaven on mission to be here with us, to live amongst us. God is on mission and he is sent for mission. And why is this important for us to understand? Because it changes how we look at everything. What this says to us is that, uh, as you heard what, what, what Shaden said a moment ago, right? He had this joy. God told him, I got you. This is my mission, Shaden, but you're a part of the mission. Therefore, I'm your provider. I'm everything you need. He is a God on mission. And, and let me show you scripturally what I mean. The next slide, please. We see here in John 20, 21, that this Messio day, that this God who is sent, this God who is on mission, we see it here when Jesus tells his disciples, he says, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Jesus says, I have been sent by the Father. And I have been sent, so you have been sent also. We are on mission for God. This is called being missional. This is called being a church. Whether you're in Malawi, Mexico, and Kauai, it is a church that is on mission for God. And you heard what Shaden said, is being a neighbor to your neighbor. Right. Messy your day. The next scripture we have is Jesus continues to speak. He says, then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Messy your day. I mean, God empowers us. He gives us what we need to be on mission. We are on mission. You are on mission. And God is, is giving you the power to go talk to that neighbor, talk to that person. Mess your day. We are a sending people. We are a people that have been sent as Christ has been sent to their community. It doesn't matter what community you choose, but God has sent you. Let me tell you something. Jesus left the vine community to be with this community. And the Holy Spirit connects them together. Can I get an amen in the house of the Lord here today? What does that look like for the divine community? We learned this last week, that there is a divine community, and it looks like this. I'll put it up there. It says, Father sends Jesus. Jesus sends Holy Spirit. All three send the church. Messy your day. You are sent. Within us lives this Jesus, this Holy Spirit, who has been sent by the Father into this world. On mission. And what is Jesus' mission? To reconcile humanity back to God. That is the mission of God. That's why he was sent. And Jesus said, as I was sent on mission, I am commissioning you, sent on mission, to do the same thing. That is what a missional church does. A missional church is looking at this community. What are the needs of our community? What is needed here? And how can I reconcile these people back to God. And if you begin to look at it that way, you begin to see all that Jesus does is reconciling his people back to him. I can tell you what Jesus was never too happy with. He was never too happy with a church that judged others. He was never too happy with a church that wasn't accepting of all people. Jesus didn't look at your sin. He looked at you as his image, that he can fix you and repair you. We look at our island here in Kauai, our community, we're honest with people. We're a small place. People know you by your last name, right? I could have told you more about things Shaden did in middle school. I didn't want to embarrass him. <laughs> but we all know each other. And because of that, there are certain people who are afraid to walk into a church. Because they're going to feel shamed or they're going to feel judged. They think that's how the church looks at them. Can I tell you something? That is not the heart of God. That is not messing your day. That is not the mission of God. As a matter of fact, if you, thank you, Lord. If you remember the, the woman caught in the act of adultery, he asked her a question. He says, where are your accusers? She says, there are none. And he says, neither do I. Let's put that in the contextual context of church. What if the church acted that way? Some people came to church when they came to a Christian. They felt in their heart there was no accusations. Because if you know the rest of the story, he says, sin no more. But we don't know her full story. 
We don't know when she left his presence or when she left church what she had to do to still maintain the living. We don't talk about that. Thank you, Jesus. The beauty of Messio Dei, the beauty of this God who is sent, is that he is sent into human community. He is sent to humanity. He knows humanity. He knows the struggles. He knows what is happening deep inside each and every single person's heart. And because he knows that, he's not in a place of judgment over that. He says, come to me, all you are weary, and I will give you what? I will give you rest. Can I get an amen? So Father sends Jesus, Jesus sends Holy Spirit, and all send the church. And what is the church? The church is you. Human community. The church is on mission for God and empowered by God. The church is on mission for God and empowered by God. We are empowered by the Holy Spirit. It's why he's given us the Holy Spirit to remain on mission, right, to help each other. I, I sound like I'm bragging, but, but what this church has done since this pandemic has been quite amazing. We've remained missional. We've seen the needs of our community, and we continue to live that way and be that way. This is living for serving. This is being messio day. It's being on mission for God and saying, if I'm on mission for God, that means I have been sent by God. You have been sent by God. God has, has you, you're not an accident. Shaden isn't an accident. None of us are an accident. Each of you, thank you, Jesus, each of you is sent. Each of you is going to be given purpose. Each of you has a divine contact. Each of you, every single one of us, is purposed for God and loved by God. Each of us, our mission, each of you is messy day. Each and every single one of us. Thank you, Jesus. And let me prove it to you. Next slide, please. It says here, the mission of God is the sending of you. The mission of God is the sending of you. What do we see in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20? We find out this. So we are Christ's what? Ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. I can't break it down any more than that right there. I can't break down messy or day anymore. Leave the scripture up there, please. Any more than it is that way right there. Let's read this together. Ready on the count of three. One, two, three. So we are Christ. Keep going. Mission. Come back. Mission. I'm an ambassador. You're an ambassador. That means that this is temporary. I got a home. And my home is heaven. And I desperately want each and every single person here to come home with me. I'm an ambassador. Which makes in some regards the church an embassy. But not an embassy that people got to come to. An embassy that breaks open the walls and goes to every single place of, 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 um, to the ends of the earth to reach people. Well, here in Kauai, we are either born and raised here. You've been transplanted here. But can I tell you something? You are here. You are here. And if you are here, you are messy of day. You have been sent by God. You are on mission from God. He is, in, in essence, it, 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 some theologians will say that God and Christ is actually a missionary. He, he is on mission. Jesus is on mission. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you, each of us, are on mission for God. Each of us are called to be a neighbor to our community. Each of us are called to love people. We are called to live for serving. Uh, I, I, I can't escape the fact that whether we like it or not, we are called to live to serve each other. We're not called to be on the sidelines. And I love something that we heard Shaden say for the young kids in the house today, for the youth. And for us older ones, don't hold them back. Don't hold them back. Release them. And let me tell you how you hold them back sometimes. Sometimes you hold them back with your politics. 
Can I say you're in the house? Sometimes we hold them back and say, you got to think like I think. No, they don't got to think like you think. They got to think how God wants them to think. Right? There are great people in the world if they were held and shackled by how you're supposed to be thinking, not how God wants them to think or God wants to move them in their community, things will not change. We can't remain the same. Messy your day to be missional, to look at the needs of our community. As you heard Shaden say, right, the hardest thing is to knock on your neighbor's door and say, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Won't you be my, would you be my, won't you be my neighbor? Amen. Next slide. So what happens here? Well, what happens here is this. Serving connects the communities. When we serve each other and live for serving, we are living messy or day. We are living on mission. We are living on purpose. And something happens. There is connection between the divine community and the human community. We are sent on mission to serve. That's it. We are sent on mission to serve. I can't escape it. I can't ignore it. But that's what we're called to do. Because if I look at the life of Jesus last I checked, he said, I come to serve. I didn't come to lord over you. I love when we hear Shaden's story when they go into the bush and, and, and he tells the young, the young man, he's a disciple, he says, no, you, it's, you're doing this. This isn't about me. This is about what you're going to be doing. But right? it's giving them platform. I'm here to serve you. Shaden's just serving his community. He's serving the people in need. And we as a church, we need to do the same thing. We need to serve our community, serve those who are in need. And there'll be a disruption sometimes. It's going to happen. But can I tell you something? And you heard Shaden, one day maybe you'll be driving your car. You've got to pull over because the joy of the Lord is your strength. And there's so much joy in you from serving what God's called you to do. You can't hold it back sometimes. Can I get it? Amen. We're going to close this out here today, and, and I want us to really catch this. I want us to re- so, so say, say messio, day. I just taught you a foreign language. If some of you all want to go to a missions trip to Latin America some way, that's not going to get you through. <laughs> but if you want to serve, your church, your God, your community, messy your day. Understand that when we live a messy your day life and when we begin to serve in that capacity, we are on mission for God. As Jesus has been sent, we have been sent also. And the beauty is that God has given us the power of the Holy Spirit to empower us, to strengthen us, and to help us in those times when things are difficult. I'm not going to lie to you. Serving sometimes gets tiring, right? Serving sometimes isn't always easy. People can be messy sometimes, right? But God has empowered each of us with the Holy Spirit. He's empowered us with cycles of life, no one to rest, no one to move, and God can do that. We're blessed to have Shaden with us here for the next month or so. And I'll bet you know, I've, I've been meeting with Shaden on a weekly basis to talk story, and, and I learn as much from him as he thinks he's learning from me. Right? That's how we should be learning from each other, serving each other. Amen? I'm going to ask the Praise and Worship Band to come up here. We're going to close this out here uh, momentarily. Can we give Shaden and his family a big round of applause again? And they're going to play a song again that we already heard because we're coming into the Christmas season. Before I get to that, I want to let you know that you have a way in which you can uh, support our brother in Christ, Shaden. And I'll put it up there. Um, If you go to our website, newhopelouis.com, and you click on the giving tab there, um, you're going to come up to a chance to give. And there's going to be an area there that's going to say Missions Malawi or Malawi Missions somehow. And you can give to that. That will come to us. And all those funds will be sending to Shaden uh, monthly as they come in. Also, you can go to text to give. So you can text the word give to the following number, 833-288-1548. 
Okay, I'll leave it up there for a while, please. And if you text that word give, you'll get instructions. And the same thing once again, you will see a tab that will say, where do you want that going to? And you can go ahead and make sure that it goes to Missions Malawi. I want you to know that because of your giving here at New Hope Lahui, we are committed to this one child for four years. That's $2,500 a year that we will be produced for giving to this child to make sure this child is finishing school, right? Um, and that's because of what is happening here at New Hope Lahui. You guys are an amazing church. You're a giving church. You're a church that has said, listen, we want to reach our community. And I felt it my need as your pastor over these last few weeks to show you from a biblical aspect what that looks like or what that's like to serve biblically. And here we say today, messy your day. And what does messy your day mean once again? It means God who is sent, a God who is on mission. He is ascending God. And coming into this Christmas season, there's no better time to realize this Christmas than in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of a crazy election, that there is a God that is messy your day. There is a God who has still sent his son as an infant child to be born to us one night in a major in Bethlehem. That there is a God who is on mission to restore his people back to him. It was a night, a holy night. And this Christmas season, as everything's going crazy, I want you to focus over the next few weeks coming into Christmas Eve and to Christmas on mess of your day. That there is a God who's been on a rescue mission from the beginning of time and it's never stopped. And we get a chance to come alongside him and to rescue our community and to bring them back to God. Amen. I want you to enjoy this song again. To sit down where you're at. And then to speak to your heart. Let mess of your day sink deep inside your soul.
Okay, so one of my favorite verses as a youth was actually um, 1 Timothy 4.12, which says, Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech and conduct, in love and faith and in purity. Will you guys stand with me and join me in the last song?
Tim's birthday today, right, Tim? Yeah! Or tomorrow. 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 Happy birthday. He's 21 plus change. Yes. And um, Pastor John. A little birdie told me that it's your birthday on Tuesday. Oh, Yay. yes. <laughs> and you guys, this man, he's my husband. He's also your pastor. And he is on his face and constantly praying for each and every single one of you. And um, it's an honor to call you because you're still my pastor. Even though you're my husband, you're still my pastor. I listen to you and... You know, <laughs> that, is that being recorded? Are we recording that? <laughs> the listening yes, part? That's recorded, is. right? Thank you, Jesus. I got, yes, I got witnesses. Yes, it is. Can we get Pastor John's lay, please? And I think we have a little, not a cupcake, but a little malasada. <laughs> um, Elisha, can you bring up the malasada for Daddy, please? Thank you. He asked. He wanted to bring it up to you. Oh, thank you, Elisha. Aw. Wait, wait. He's going to light it for you. You can light it. Go ahead. It's like a bomb. <laughs> try it again. Try it again. Thank you, Elisha. Love you, son. Oh, my goodness. Oh. You outdid yourself. Give Sierra a hand. Sierra. <laughs> Thank you, Sierra. No kisses, sorry. <laughs> you know, like COVID, right? I mean, we just want to be mindful of that, right? Yeah. Sorry, Pastor John. Um, we never have one cupcake. No, wait, we're going to sing happy birthday. <laughs> well, you stay talking is what? All right. Ready, set, go. Happy birthday. And Tim, too. Thank you. Yes, I, I purposely spit on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can tell some... I had a guy in America, he used to lick his chicken before most eat his chicken. Anyway, anyway, that's a different story. On behalf of myself and this amazing dream team here at New York Louis, it is an honor to serve you. It's an honor to serve alongside you. Right. We love you. God loves you. Let's leave here today on mission for God, being sent by God. Let's live messy your day every single day. Can I get an amen? We love you. God bless you. If you need prayer, please drive around, see my sister right there, Anna, and she will pray for you. So will her team. We love you. God bless you. Have a great week in the Lord. We'll see you next week, Sunday. God bless you. Ethan, we love you, Ethan.